Hi everyone, it's Maria Kaneko Miller here, and this is the Fearless Performer Series. Today's topic is presentation, but before that, I just want to thank you so much for watching these videos, for liking, for subscribing, and again, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below, because I'd love to address them. Uh, if there's anything to do with today or a previous day, let me know, because uh, that's what I'm here for, to answer your questions. Also, if you'd like a summary of all these keys, just sign up. Uh, the, the URL's actually sonicescapemusic.com forward slash fearless, and you'll see it in the description. And by joining our mailing list, I can send that right to you. So, what is presentation? Well, presentation is how the world perceives you're performing. So it's everything really, it's your sound, it's your body language, it's your look, how you talk to the audience, how you communicate with the audience, and also how you interact with the people on stage. Now, I view my preparation for presentation as being like an actor. I build my character carefully by focusing on all the elements that go into my performance and the way people perceive me. And when you do a live show, that focus is going to mainly be on how you are with the people in that room and your live sound. If you're doing a virtual performance, then it's about your audio and your video. So how, how does it sound through the microphones? How does it look? Lighting. And you practice those settings to get them tweaked so that it gets better and better. Now, when you do a performance and you fill it, they film it, it's all of those things combined. So it takes even more preparation, but it's totally worth capturing that. And with my shows with the Victoria Symphony, it was perhaps the biggest project I've ever done because it involved five cameras. It involved audiences on several levels because it's a big hall. So I have to think of the people on the first floor, the second, the third, and also the recording. How does that sound come across live, but also through the microphones when you watch the video of it? So I wanted to go through all the things I thought about preparing for this because I think they'll give you good ideas for what you two can think about. So first, my costume. I'm really picky about what I wear because I want to be comfortable. First and foremost, I would choose sweatpants over a gown any day if it made me be able to play better because my shoulders aren't restricted, my body isn't restricted, but I want to look nicer than wearing sweatpants. So I got a grant for this project and part of that was to design a dress. And I wanted something that allowed me to not wear high heels because I don't perform in high heels. So I wanted to look elegant even without high heels. I wanted it to enable me to move. I wanted it to have a nice form, but also not restrict me in any way or show like big sweat marks because I sweat a lot when I play. So keeping all that in mind, that's how I designed the dress. And I realized I was going to kick my legs up, so I went out and bought biker shorts. I get blisters sometimes on my feet from my dress shoes, so I bought little invisible booty socks that I could wear inside those shoes so that you wouldn't see them, but I wouldn't get blisters. Now, one thing I didn't count for is that uh, the smoothness of that sock made my shoe fly off one day when I kicked my foot up. But I was prepared because, as I said, in all your presentation work and preparation, you're going to be ready to face any adversity that comes your way because you've thought of most eventualities. So that's just on the, the clothing front. And then, musically speaking, for the composition, I wanted to create violin lines that could stand out um, over the orchestra sometimes or blend with the orchestra. And I chose where to do that so that I could take my time and relax sometimes when I'm blending with the orchestra and then really bring it when the line became virtuosic or high. And this is important because it was a really, really technically difficult program. So I need to have places where I can breathe like that. Now, on the audio front, this excites me to tell you, because Sean and I, and Sean is my music and life partner, who is also behind the camera for this, helping me record it, but we usually perform together as a duo, and we're super mobile on stage, so we wanted to find a way where our acoustic sound could be blended with amplified sound with good quality. So we came upon these. They are countryman mics, 
And they allow you, first of all, to not be tethered to your instrument, because usually violin pickups have you tethered because you need to wear the pack on your back and you can't put down your instrument. But in this case, it's on my face, so I can talk, I can perform, and it really captures a good sound. So we had that for the Victoria Symphony Concert. But then on the film front, we'd actually hired this really flashy video guy, and he bailed on us. So Sean took over filming, and Sean brought five different cameras with two other camera crew and uh, wanted to capture it with gimbals. So that's something you can hold where you can move the camera around and it's not all shaky. So he was in the pit with the gimbal and we had cameras set up in other places and we practiced that before the show. I was on the second floor and Sean was on the stairs to see how low he could be and still capture me in a way that looked good. So we did lots of preparation for that. And then there's the interaction with the people you're playing with. So in this case, with the orchestra, I wanted to have eye contact with the various sections depending on when they were playing solos too. So I practiced with a MIDI recording of the orchestra so that I knew exactly where Sean O'Loughlin had written solos for whether it's woodwinds or drums or the bass so that I could communicate with them on stage because that creates a nicer show for the audience than if I'm just staring forward and never even noticing what's going on behind me. So these are just some of the elements that I worked on in preparation for these shows and for the videos that came afterwards. And I can safely say that I practice less than any professional musician I know, but I may spend more time on presentation than any I know as well, because to me, it's what gives you the wow factor. It's when you get on stage and it looks seamless and natural, and like you're a fearless performer, it's really because you did all that preparation work before. So I wanna give you an assignment. Um, I want you to think of your next performance. And I want you to think of all the elements of presentation that you can work on. So are you gonna film it? And even if you're just filming it for yourself so that you can see how you look when you perform, set that up. If you are going to post that video online or share it with the public, maybe have someone come so that they can hold it because a moving camera is much better for portraying your energy and your movement than a fixed camera. Uh, think of what you're gonna wear. Is it gonna be comfortable? I don't wanna see you wearing a skirt that's too short and then constantly yanking it down during the concert because you feel uncomfortable because that does not read as fearless. Uh, I want you to feel great and look great. I want you to think about the eye contact you're making, the way you're using that stage, moving around it. So really make a list of all these things and then double it in length because you, on first pass, you're not gonna think of everything that you can work on. And then double that list so that it's an incredible and comprehensive list of all the things that you can do to prepare. Because when you do that preparation work, it makes you feel like you can just focus on the art on stage and on communication. So I've loved talking about this with you. I think it is so important. And again, if you have any questions, especially on this theme, because we have spent decades now focusing on presentation, let me know and I'll be happy to get back to you. So without further ado, I pass you on to The Blacksmith, which um, should appear as a video beside me if you don't automatically redirect to it. Have a nice day. Bye.